Hey there guys, Daryl Griffiths here for Jump Cut Online once again. This is my latest video review from Glasgow Film Festival. Sadly, it is my last night here, which is gutting because I've thoroughly enjoyed my time here. Uh, and my final film has been seen. Hence why I'm putting this out pretty much straight away because I'm really keen to talk about this one. It is Fox Lux. It stars Natalie Portman of Black Swan fame. And is directed by Brady Corbett, who provided us with The Childhood of a Leader, which starred Robert Pattinson. I'm not sure how many of you guys have seen that particular film, but it's a terrific piece of work. And Vox Lux is quite the leap from that one, that's for sure. But it's no less dark in its content. So Vox Lux is... The, it chronicles the rise of this pop starlet by the name of Celeste. The young version is played by Rafi Cassidy and, of course, Natalie Portman, the fully-fledged version. Uh, she is born, or her career is born, out of very tragic circumstances. I won't spoil the specifics of it, but it is a hot topic in America right now. That is for sure. And through a memorial service and this crafting of a song, she breaks out instantly in this time of great grief that has engulfed her hometown and she's instantly thrown into this world of choreography and pop videos and very provocative ones at that and then as we arrive at Natalie Portman her life has been quite extra and extravagant in nature and she's very ballsy she's quite audacious in what she says she doesn't really give a shit <laughs> to put it mildly and it she, her manager uh, played by Jude Law his accent is quite off-putting it kind of throws you off that it is actually him when you first see him um, and he's quite shady in nature uh, it's quite ambiguous in how it's portrayed within the film um, but again it's very much a hot topic if you look at it within pop music right now and without naming names because I think that would be quite intrusive of how these figures are sort of put on a pedestal, pedestal and not really dealt with in an incisive way uh, and that whole very peculiar dynamic that they have and the film Vox Lux is I think it's very acid tongued it's cynical to a degree and I think that's gonna rile a few people it's it's very divisive and I can see why already uh, from people who've already seen it for me I think it's bloody brilliant and my interpretation of it is we, I think we've lost so much faith in the figures that are meant to lead us through troubled times. We have put pop stars as these godlike figures. And whenever they say anything, we almost take it as gospel. And I think Brady Corbett deals with that aspect wondrously. Within the early frames, these really sweeping tracking shots and the, it's very disorientating as it speeds up certain uh, moments and it sort of creates this very blurred vision and in a way it's probably representative of the world we live in. We're very blind to a lot of what's going on right now and I think the way pop stars are sort of being portrayed has got like figures and it's almost biblical uh, in their spectacle and their extravagance and their extra or extra nature about them and I think the film through Natalie Portman's performance who my god this is a showstopper from her uh, as, as I previously mentioned she's ballsy she is deeply flawed she's not afraid to show it and in the actual song and dance sequences uh, again credit to Corbett because I'm assuming this wasn't blessed with the greatest budget but the way it's choreographed and orchestrated uh, in the performances, it certainly gives off a really splendid amount of scale and finesse. And I was quite taken aback by it. Um, but the performance by Portman is just... It's phenomenal. I, th I think that's the only way I can put it. I mean... 
we're no stranger to her musicality. You only have to look at her Saturday Night Live skits, which are, you know, instant classics. If you've not seen them, you chew them. You know what to do. Um, but this is another wondrous reminder of how great Natalie Portman is if you give her just the right material and Brady Corbett has given her a gem of a role here and I just think the way it deconstructs this idea of celebrity and superficiality within this world and how shady it is and we seem to put more faith in this idea of celebrity instead of genuine substance and and Natalie Portman's character, Celeste, she's very clinical about how pop stars through in their early years were probably putting out greater works uh, within their back catalogue. And then they've sort of arrived at a point where they're so bombarded by this very peculiar music industry that it is now in terms of not being able to make money as much and... They're sort of thrown into things and there's a lot of cross mitigation uh, through branding and, you know, that kind of thing. And it sort of creates this greater sense of popularity when they're not necessarily sticking to their guns. And I think, again, it's sort of it's how we put these music stars on, you know, like King and Queen. We always... You know, you don't have to look at the likes of Beyonce and Taylor Swift and then and how they've created these grand brands about, you know, from literally nothing. And they sort of have these phases and and then there are stars that are really problematic and we sort of skim over it just because they're putting out bops, if you like. And we sort of just, you know, it's almost if the art will stand for itself and we forget about the actual character traits of these people who are meant to entertain us and there might be a certain degree of fierce intelligence about them but I think the film really tries is very telling in how it and very acid tongued as I say in terms of deconstructing that with real finesse and sharpness and I, I was genuinely blown away by the film. As I, as I said before, I think it's going to piss a few people off. I, I really do, because it is very divisive. It's very... It's certainly no bubblegum, royale with cheese take on this pop stardom and how it's normally portrayed, for the most part. And Portman is such a stark contrast to it. and But it's a thrill to watch. And... I think the way it's directed is just superb and it, it generally feels like a boundary pusher for me and Brady Corbett is becoming he's a really intriguing director from what he's made already and I cannot wait to see what he does after this because whether it's through the spectacle of the piece the just the real sheer depth in how he digs into this character it's it's just utterly compelling and it's hard not to take your eyes off it and that is credit to portman as well so vox look is vox Lux is very much one to look out for i think it's out in may in the uk uh curse and artificial eye have backed it thank goodness because uh, we've got again another film that we've waited a long time to come around and it is well worth the wait and I hope you've enjoyed my video re review of Vox Lux. Um, I was so keen to put it out there because I just think it is an, it's a my mind is blown a little bit because there's so there were so many thoughts rummaging around in my head, and I felt like I had to get it out there as quickly as possible before it sort of well went and I couldn't really find the words to uh, be coherent. Um, so jump cut online uh, if you can like our page. On Facebook, you can follow us on Twitter, and of course, jumpcutonline.co.uk. Uh, on a personal level, you can subscribe to my channel below on YouTube, and 
there will be a couple more film reviews still to be done. It will probably be just after the festival now. Uh, there's the likes of Out of Blue, The Vanishing, uh, Gloria Bell, which was the surprise film here uh, on Wednesday night. I still haven't got around to putting my thoughts out there about that one either. Um, so be sure to look out for those. For now, I've been Daryl Griffiths. Hope you've enjoyed my video review of Vox Lux, and I will see you later. Thank you, guys. Bye now.